Hi, Amani here. Thanks for tuning in to Wilderness with Amani. Today I'm going to be hiking into Cottonwood Lakes. It's uh, in the mountains above Lone Pine. Um, excellent golden trout fishing. And it's one of those destination spots where if you want to backpack up there, you can also, there's the old army pass right there, and you could go from Lake Four and go up and check out uh, Mount Langley if you're the adventurous type. Uh, the hike to the Third Lake is about six and a half miles. It's a fairly moderate hike. It's a lot of up and downs. You start hiking at 10,000 feet. There's a great backpackers campground here. So if you can get your wilderness permit the day before and you can come up here, stay in the backpackers campground, get acclimated so that you don't get altitude sickness or you're less inclined to. And then you can backpack in bright and early and I think it's like six bucks a night. So um, today I am just going to be day hiking because I don't have time <laughs> to get the permit and do anything. So I'm gonna day hike in and day hike out. I'm gonna do, uh, go up and catch some golden trout and take a look around. So I'll do some highlights of the trail so that you can kind of see what you're getting into if this is what you want to do. I will say the first part of the trail is uh, not so incredible it uh, looks like anywhere eastern sierras eastern sierra uh, but once you get about four and a half miles in it really opens up and just becomes spectacular so we'll take a look at that and uh hope you enjoy the hike <laughs> i'll be powering in uh with a fairly heavy pack today because uh I wanted to be ready to go and I wasn't sure if uh, there was going to be snow still because I know there was snow up there about a week ago. So anyway, enjoy the hike and we'll see what we got going. So this is what you want, the Cottonwood Lakes New Army Pass Trail. You want to make sure you take that right in the road down below or else you're going to end up at the other trail that takes you in the wrong direction. And. These are the golden trout we're gonna be fishing for. Cottonwood lakes are always special regulation. Uh, you always gotta check your regulations. It's artificial, barbless only. You can only keep fish from the fifth lake this year, but that is subject to change. Here we go. We will be cutting through the golden trout wilderness in your account in your national forest. No wood fires above 10,400 feet. Cottonwood Lakes is at about 11,000 feet. So you, it's a still over nothing. So we start, we cut through the golden trout wilderness and then we end up in the John Muir wilderness. And we'll be just to the, just to the other side of Sequoia National Park. So the first couple miles, there's a lot of this. And what it is, is just gradually going up. So there's nothing extreme. As long as your pack's not too heavy, you can cruise along it pretty good. Uh, there's a couple sets of switchbacks, but this isn't a killer trail. So it's totally day hike doable. Um, if you get an early start like I did. There is stock animal and horse crap. Um, just a heads up, this is a trail where there is a pack station right at the base of the trailhead. But this is a place where you're gonna, you might often it, run into some stock animals. And if you've never run into stock animals on a trail and or you're new to backpacking, as I said in my hiking tips uh, clip I put up. You want to give these animals a wide berth. You want to get clear off the trail. You don't want to get kicked. <laughs> I've never been kicked, but I'm sure it hurts. <laughs> so, you know, some people aren't into stock animals on the trail, you know. This isn't the time or place to debate that. You just want to give these animals a lot of room. So, just some advice. If you feel like going right past them, some people are just going to do what they want to do. <laughs> right on. 
this is a cool area where you kind of cruise down and there's some washes over there and I said that this trail is uneventful. It is a really beautiful trail. It just uh, you it transitions into a, a, a few drastically different environments. Uh, it, at one point, there's just incredible high meadows with uh, lakes you go through, and it's really really cool. But this is this section. I'm going. I'm just cruising downhill right now. Like I said. If you, if you want to go on a trip that's not too far and you don't want to do a big loop and you want to just do a destination, this is a good place because it's not such a nightmare to haul in and out of this place. So, look how cool this wood is that's on the side of the trail and all over. It's, it's really dry up here, so the wood gets really dry and it's, it's really slow to decompose, and that's why you really can't have fires up here because this is the only thing to regenerate the soil. But look, the colors out here early in the morning are just, just incredible. I just am so excited to be out here. <laughs> it's, it's just so exciting. All right. I am about... Optimistically, I want to say three miles in, <laughs> but that might be optimistic. But anyway, the trail is just officially getting a little nasty. And this will be the first time. It's, I have a half pack. My pack's only about 40 pounds. If you got a full pack, this will be the first time that you put your shoulders up and say, oh shucks. <laughs> because this is a this is a it's not a killer but it's a it's a sustained grade so this is what you're looking at uh, you, there's going to be some switchbacks but there's a lot of this if you look at the elevation changes and you look on a topo map it's not too bad started hiking at 5 30 so it's nice and cool out and uh, it's, it's so this is really easy. My pack's not heavy and I'm just cruising right up this thing. But I mean, you know, even if you're in good shape at this altitude, you go 10 yards, you're breathing hard. Just enjoy the ups and downs on the, on the way in. Once you hit about three miles, I'm hoping that's just three miles, um, you're gonna start hitting some, I mean, you're gonna have to pay the price at some point, you gotta figure. <laughs> This, this whole ride isn't going to be for free unless you're sitting on a horse. <laughs> and here's our first beautiful meadow. It's got a meandering stream through it. And we're starting to transition into a little bit more green. Boy, there weren't any mosquitoes out at the car because it was still too cold, I think. But I doused myself with DEET. And I'm talking... Not that 40% stuff, I use the 98% stuff that melts plastic and <laughs> makes your lips numb. You can almost hear my liver screaming when, it, when I put it on, I was, just, <laughs> I was just slathering that stuff on. <laughs> you want to be ready before you start hiking when you get up into these areas because the mosquitoes are circling my head like satellites around the planet right now. And if you're new to backpacking, these thin shirts the mosquitoes will bite you right through that. I just doused that with DEET too. So, oh look at this. There's like this, uh, this beautiful, these tiny little orange flowers. See that? And there's a whole little spot of them with a little bit of white. I don't want to walk out there because that would just destroy it. <laughs> and uh, it's a well-used trail. This is, this, is a, this is a trail a lot of people use because it's, uh, this trail and the other trail that goes into Golden Trout Wilderness, the other trailhead down there, is that stream. They they go to a lot of places. There are large loops. Uh, you can you can get to Whitney from one of these trails. You can hike into Sequoia. Um, this is there's really a ton of opportunities up, up opportunity up here if you ever want to explore this place. But it's nice though. But yeah, get your bug spray going. <laughs> Whatever you use, whether it's natural or it's the Everclear of, of bug spray like I use, DEET, the 98%, <laughs> jungle juice or whatever the hell it's called, uh, 
you want to get that going before you start. We've been, we entered the Golden Trout Wilderness and now we've reached the part of the trail. We are now entering the John Muir Wilderness Area. These are designated wilderness areas. Uh, they're run by the National Forest. Look at that, that's nice. About a four pound load a horse dropped right next to the stream people are filtering water out of down at that other crossing and I'm sure that came with you know a gallon of liquid with it that the horse dropped right here and then it just flows right into the creek that we're all drinking <laughs> I'm not you know hey when I'm 80 I'm only 49 when I'm 80 or I'm 48. When I'm 80, I might ride a horse up myself. So I don't know. I don't want. I don't want to pass judgment. I'm just making an observation. That's a lot of crap and pee right around this crystal clear drinking source, and it's kind of a bummer when you see it when it's wet like that. But uh, I guess it is what it is. So I love these nice river crossings. If you've made it this far, where you're starting to rise up above the trees on on this on that slope you know you're getting kind of close to where things open up so you know you've made it pretty far so if at the base of this hill you dropped a well-deserved f-bomb <laughs> when you saw how much more uphill you had to go you, you earned it <laughs> and just know that there's a silver lining to this cloud because now that we're going steadily up we're going to rise up and get into the basin where the lakes are and that's pretty much sound of music skipping through the meadow material so we're making good headway here and we're going to be up to, to where the views go from mediocre to spectacular soon cool little creek over there kind of adds to the mood this trail is cool in its own way because it's so dry and the wood has such a there's such a stark contrast between the red the reddish tree trunks and then the dried out bleached out wood that's slowly decomposing If this is the worst I got to look at, I'll be grateful. <laughs> I just want to get their bone dry. That's what that's my goal. But we're making it. And even as you can see, nothing's free. You're going to pay a little price, but this hike isn't that bad. If you're someone like me that really doesn't like hiking where hiking is the least part of the trip that you like, <laughs> and you just go base camp and then just kind of day hike around. This is a good hike for you. If you don't want to be completely punished to start early in the day like I did or come in the fall when it's a lot cooler. It's it's uh, July 14th today. So uh, it's going to be probably in the mid to upper 70s up there today. I mean, it's a, this is where the trail really gets beautiful. And you can see the sun really starting to light up those beautiful red tree trunks and it's uh, rugged as ever but it's not a hard trail to go over there's not a, a huge amount of these big steps that you got to cross but we're getting up to where there's not a whole lot more uphill to go um, but the uphills it's gonna it's not too much it's not too killer and once you get up above and you get up into the meadows it the uh, it's 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 really easy going once you reach the lower lake number one it's easy going from there so so i've been going for about two hours and 45 minutes and i've bested the bit the most of the uphill that's the back of the lake air right back there one of those is mount langley the 14,000 foot peak and i'll point out the route to get up there if you ever want to try to come up here and day hike that as you can see, there's still a lot of snow. I'm hoping I can get back to the best fishing where I want to go. It's July 14th and there's a lot of snow. 
So, two hours and 45 minutes. I didn't take a lot of rest. Horseshoe Meadow, we started his way down there. The wind's really whipping because I just came up over this path. But now we're getting into the zone where it's just incredible meadows. I mean, this is an incredible meadow for the high country. You know, this year, this is only going to be free of snow depending on when it starts snowing. Um, last year it started snowing in October. But this is a... Uh, this is the this is the kind of year where it's only going to be snow free for about five months. So stuff up here doesn't have a lot of time to grow. As you can see, all the trees are stunted. So there's like some kind of cool marmot or something sitting on that rock right there. I can see the first of the lakes. So we're just about here. And as you can see, this is where the views just get spectacular. It's almost like you're on another planet. You can, if you can all avoid trampling anything like this, you know, the more of this kind of dynamic stuff that you get out into, it could take a really long time for this stuff to regenerate. So if you can just stay on this skinny little path, it's an ugly scar but at least it's a thin one. <laughs> so so that's, that's what's good. And then you got trees over here. I mean, the scenery out here is just absolutely amazing. And the wind is whipping though. Pretty much once you get to that pass that I was at where it was really, really windy, you're pretty much there. I mean, there's no more hills that are significant and you're pretty much just walking through this extraordinary meadow and there's one of the lakes. So I'm at Lake 3. This is where most people camp. And a lot of it's because there's really established sites here. Like down there, there's people camping. Up there, there's people camping. There's going to be a lot of people if you camp here, though. So I usually camp up at lakes four and five. I usually at lake five up in the rocks. But you got to understand, you're going to deal with a lot more wind up there than you will down here. The smart money is to find an established spot up against that big hill up there, and that'll block you from the wind. Um, I was up top first week of last October 2018 and the snowstorm hit and it was not very nice up there <laughs> so but we're gonna go up there anyway uh, I heard there's a lot of snow so we'll see how far we can go but we're gonna catch some fish today no doubt about that that much I can promise you so there's the lake coming down on it now the fishing in lake three is good it's uh most people don't even make it up to lakes four and five um that's why i like to go up there that's why i like to camp up there i can deal with the wind in the harsh conditions i can even deal with the whiteout blizzard i learned last october <laughs> but uh if i can get away from people but if you if you don't mind a couple of people this is a nice uh place to camp um there's a lot of established sites and you uh and there's a, there's a, this is the first lake that's really substantial in size. And there's a lot of, there's a fishing trail that goes around it. There's a lot of large boulders that you can get on. I just know it's special regulations, artificial barbless only. And all we gotta do is get up this one last little set of switchbacks to get up to four and five. And hopefully I'm not crossing any crazy uh, ice because there's a lot of snow. And you got to watch out if you're not used to camping when there's snow early in the morning, that snow's really hard. And if you don't got any traction on your boots, you know, one step you can slip a hundred feet. In some situations you can, you can slip several hundred feet. So you always want to make sure of your footing um, and, and make sure that what you're stepping on isn't going to cause you to 
slide in a chain reaction. See, this lake is good size. You can fish here all day. There's a lot of boulders that you can get down to. So here's lake four. Up there, you can't see it because it's covered with snow. And if you aren't seriously experienced, I would never try to go up there. But there's a trail that goes up all the way to the top. And then you can get, that's Cirque Peak right there, I believe. So I think that's Mount Langley. So if you camp at uh, Lake 3, you can just zip right up there. Um, you can spend a day hiking up there. Just on the other side of that is Sequoia uh, National Park, I believe. And uh, that is uh, that right there is a 14,000 foot peak. I believe that's Mount Langley. One of these peaks back here is Mount Langley. I believe that's it. So when people climb that, they declare themselves a 14er. I believe the best fishing is in the back of Lake 5, but I just want to make sure you understand. There's these two snow fields that it's had to get around. Um, that's Snap Your Leg City. And if you look over here, I'm going to have to climb over all of these boulders to get to where I want to go. And I'm by myself, I gotta be really careful I don't snap my leg. Uh, they'll be able to find me once they don't show up because I, e I, I sent an email to my brother telling him where I'd be, but I don't want it to come down to that. But the back of Lake 5 is where the action is, but you can catch all the fish you need to right at the front where you can walk right up to. <laughs> so I just wanna go back here because I wanna try to get something extraordinary. But I'm gonna have to really work to get it. So it's taken me, I left it about roughly 5.30 to get to the top of those that last little set of switchbacks to get up to Lake 5, Lake 4 and 5. It took me, it was about 9 a.m. when I got there and I stopped and talked to a ranger on the way. So it wasn't like uh, I, I powered straight in. I stopped and talked to a couple different groups of people. You gotta be really careful if you don't have a lot of experience with uh, snow around high alpine lakes. You really gotta watch out. You don't know how deep a hole is under that snow. You don't know if a creek is under it. So you just gotta make sure you don't fall through it. So I'm gonna be climbing over these large dry boulders to try to stay clear of as much snow as I can that's tucked in between these rocks. Cause I don't wanna step on any of that stuff and snap my femur back here and, and die <laughs> so I just want to catch fish 